You know, it, it was at a, 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 an old Super Bowl uh, several years ago, a Super Bowl, a, uh, 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 it was at the Super Bowl game. A, a diehard fan was surprised to see an empty seat at the stadium at the biggest game of the year, Super Bowl Sunday. Sunday, And, 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 and the man, he, he just kind of remarked and said, man, I cannot believe nobody is sitting in that seat. And a fan who was sitting nearby remarked, well, that was my wife's seat. The man explained that my wife died. And the other fellow said, oh, man, I am so sorry to hear that. And yet I'm surprised that another relative or another friend didn't jump at the opportunity to sit in her reserved seat. The man said, beats me. They all insisted on going to the funeral. <laughs> Some of you will get it later. You're a little slow today. <laughs> we can become so focused on ourselves and being me first and lose sight of what's most important in life. We, we love to put ourselves first. We, we love to think about ourselves, and, and we, we love to be first. And you know, growing up, I remember in school, and some of you students, you know, we, we want to play a sport. We want to be first team. We want to make the first string. And, you know, you, you play an instrument back when, back when I was in band, you know, back for a short time. I, I wanted to make first chair in band when I ever run a race. And still today when I run a race, I'm not near as fast as I used to be, but I, I want to win the race. If I'm playing a game, I don't play for fun. I play to win. Who knows what I'm talking about? We played we play some card games over Christmas. We played some board games. I, I played to win. People will get up early on Black Friday, I mean, in the middle of the night, and go camp out in the cold at a store to be first in line so they can go buy their electronic. They want to be first. My kids, when they were smaller, they used to race to be first to the car. I thought that was so funny. You know, kids want to be first to the car. But then I look at us adults, we do the same thing. Come on, how many of you know you're driving in your car? You want to be first at the stoplight. Come on, where are you in this house today? Where are you, huh? You want to be first at the stop sign. You will, you will go fast to make sure you're first at the stop sign, at the first stoplight, because we like to be first. Anybody like me? I will fast walk in the grocery store to try to beat you so I can be first. Anybody know what I'm talking about, huh? I will come. I will, you, 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 you don't want done? I'm going to be first in the line. We love to put ourselves in first place. Here's what we think. We think our lives will be better if we are first. That's why we're always trying to be first because my life will be better. But then Jesus steps on the scene 2,000 years ago, and he says, if you really want to be first place in life, if you really want to win in life, if you really want a blessed life, it doesn't happen by putting you first. It happens only by putting God first. And today I want to unpack this verse for you, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, a very common, a very familiar, a very famous verse, and yet I want to shed some new light on this verse. The verse says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The greatest regrets of your life, the greatest regrets of my life have happened because we sought after the wrong things. And we're in this series talking about how to live a life of fewer regrets. And the reality is, you and I, what we sought after that brought us regret, what we learned when we began to seek after those things, is they did not deliver the results we thought they would. Instead, it delivered shame. What we sought after delivered heartache. It delivered pain. It delivered broken relationships. It delivered regret after regret. What you seek will determine what you get. And the outcome is predictable. I'm going to say that again. I want you to meditate on it. What you seek will determine what you get. And the outcome is so predictable. 
All of us are seeking after something, and our seeking is leading us in a direction, and the outcome to that direction is very predictable. Some of you are seeking for love in all the wrong places, and the outcome is predictable pain, heartache, broken relationships, regret, after regret. Some of you, your whole life is about seeking after more and more money and more and more possessions, and the outcome is predictable pain, heartache, broken relationships, regret after regret. Some of you, your whole goal in life is to seek as much pleasure as you can find, to, to do whatever makes you happy, and the outcome is predictable pain, heartache, broken relationships, regret after regret. And so Jesus said this. Jesus said this, hey, 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 Christ followers, hey, hey, people who, who say, I am a Christian. I don't want you to live a life full of regret, so don't live like people who don't know God. Don't put you first. Matter of fact, the verse right before in Matthew chapter 6, verse 32, here's what Jesus said. It says, for the Gentiles, some translation says the pagans. That's the heart of what Jesus is talking about. The pagans, those who don't know God, they seek. Notice that word. They seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Those who don't know God, they, they seek after the car and, and the money. They seek after the thrill. They seek after the pleasure, the power, the popularity. And it ends up in pain, heartache, broken relationships, and regret after regret. And Jesus said this. Jesus said, I know you need the money. I know you need the clothes. I, I know you need the possessions. I, I know you need the relationships. But I also know you don't want to live a life full of regrets. So, so, so here's my promise. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first God and his righteousness and everything else will be given to you. All those other desires, if you will put me first and seek me first, I will bless your life. But it's God first, not you first. God first, not you First, here's what I want to teach us today. I want to give you three truths I wish I would have known about putting God first. If you're new with us today, that's what our series is titled. I wish I would have known. I wish I would have. 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 And I want to say, I wish I would have known what about just putting God first. And I think about my life just years ago. I wish somebody would have taught me years ago. Herbert? Here are some things about putting God first that would transform your life. Let me give those three truths to you today. Number one, I wish I would have known that everything is more spiritual than I realize. I wish I would have understood this years ago. I wish I would have known everything is more spiritual than I realized. So, so before Jesus said, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, he was talking to the crowd. He was talking to a group of people who were worrying about their life. That They were seeking after the wrong things. And Jesus was teaching them how the spiritual and the natural are connected. Now, now, most people even, most people who go to church, they don't understand this. So, so they ignore this verse because this verse doesn't make sense to them. Because they're thinking, listen, if I need a car, if I need a home, if I need a relationship, if I need that business deal to get done, I got to go do whatever I need to do. What does Jesus mean? Seek God first. I got to go make this thing happen. So people try to make dating happen on their own. They try to make marriage work on their own. They, they try to make parenting. They try to make money and career happen on their own. They try to make life's most important decisions on their own. They don't realize that the natural and the spiritual are connected. Everything is more spiritual than you realize. So Jesus said, yeah, yeah, I know you need all of that. I know you need all of that. I know you desire all of that in 2023. But what I want you to understand is that the natural and the spiritual are connected. So here's what I want you to do. Seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and the natural, the natural will happen in your life. But the natural and the spiritual are connected. Church, everything is more spiritual than you realize. Here's how the scripture describes this in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Everything's more spiritual. It says, for our struggle, and you just named the struggle that you're facing right now. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. See, our struggle is not against people. And I know right now somebody's like, mm, I don't know. You, you, you don't know the people I'm messing with right now. Listen, church, we're not wrestling and fighting against people. What I want you to understand, it's more spiritual than that. Everything's more spiritual than you realize. Can I tell you, church, your marriage struggle is more spiritual than you realize. Your struggle with your child or your parent is more spiritual than you realize. Your financial struggle is more spiritual than you realize. Your struggle at work, your struggle at school, your struggle in dating, your struggle with health, your struggle with friendship is more spiritual than you realize. You're in a spiritual battle. Here, here, here's what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. He says, these words are so critical. Be alert and of sober mind. Be alert, or, or church, be aware. Be sensitive to the fact that what? Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to, deva to devour. Church, you're in a spiritual battle. There is a real devil and real demons. And if I was the devil, thank God I'm not. But if I was the devil, I wouldn't want you to know that I'm involved in a lot of things you're blaming on people. I would want you to think it's just your boss, it's, it's just your spouse, it's, it's just your parents, it's just your child. I would want you to think, oh, it's just your money, it's just your health. No! Everything is more spiritual than you realize. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do when we realize everything is more spiritual than I, re I realize? What do we do when we realize that the spiritual and the natural are connected? We, well, here's what we do, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. For though we live in the world, we do live in this world. We're in this flesh. We got to go to work. We got to go to school. We got to pay bills. We, we got go, we, we to we, we live life. We're, for we're, we're in the world. But we do not wage war as the world does. We live in the world, but if we're going to win the battles of life, if we're going to live a life of fewer regrets, we can't do things like the world does them. We can't fight like the world fights. So here's what Paul says in verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. You just named the area of your struggle. There are spiritual weapons that have divine power to demolish strongholds. Paul says, don't view your life, don't view your problems the way the world does. It's more spiritual than you realize. Don't fight like the world fights. Use your spiritual weapons. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Pastor, what does it look like to fight with some spiritual weapons? Well, when you realize everything's more spiritual than you realize, than you understand and realize, you begin to fight with prayer. You begin to fight with fasting. Those things are not optional. You'll fight with worship. You don't come to church and have your hands in your pocket. You're not playing on your phone. You're lifting them bad boys up to heaven and you're saying, God, I got to bless you because what I'm dealing with this week is more spiritual than I realize. I got to give you some praise. I got to lift up my voice and say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. 
Yeah, 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 come on, you. I gotta seek you first. I, with my generosity, with my Bible reading, with righteous living, with loving people, with making God honoring decisions. Because if I'll seek you first, if I realize everything that I'm facing is more spiritual than I realize, so I'm gonna set my goal to seek you first, and then everything else in the natural will be added to me as well. Everything is more spiritual than you realize. So seek first the kingdom of God. Number two is this. Here's what I wish I would have known years ago. I wish I would have known that it would be my best year ever if it was my best year spiritually. I wish I would have understood this. I wish somebody was, would have taught me what I'm getting ready to teach you right now. Jesus said, seek me first, and all these other things will be added to your life. All these other things I can add to your life in 2023. But, but here's what most people think. Most people, even a lot of Christians think, it will be my best year ever if I can just get that home. It'll be my best year ever if I can just get that car. It'll be my best year ever if I can get that dream job. It'll be my best year ever if I can get that relationship or that friendship or that connection. If I can just get my marriage fixed, it'll be my best year ever. And so people spend all of their time and all of their energy seeking after those things instead of doing what Jesus said. And that's seeking first God's kingdom. If you put God's kingdom first, I'm telling you, church, everything else will begin to fall into place. But you have to seek first God's kingdom. You have to seek his kingdom over your kingdom. You have to seek his way over your way. You have to seek his will over your will. You have to seek to follow what he wants over what you want. I remember in, in high school, I, I started receiver my junior year and then my my senior year, I, I started in the running back position, and I remember as I was learning the running back plays, it had been a while in junior high, I played running back, and then receiver in high school, then went back to running back, and so I had to freshen up on the plays, and, and I remember learning the playbook, I was trying to learn the playbook, coach gave me the playbook, I'm learning the playbook, and and, and I, I was trying to execute the plays, and there was one play, I just didn't quite understand it, I thought I did, and it was a counter play. I would step one way, and then I would come and get the ball, and I would run through the hole. And I kept stepping, getting the ball, and I was running through the hole, and the linebacker was wearing me out. I just, bam! I'm like, this is the horrible play. Horrible. Keep stepping, get the ball. Bam! Coach says, Herbert, you're not running the play right. I showed you how to run. You're not running the play right. Kind of, you're running your own play, Herbert. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not running the play right? I'm stepping, and I'm getting the ball, and I'm running through the hole. He says, well, the guard is pulling. You're moving so quickly, you're beating the guard to the hole. That guard is pulling, and that guard's going to go and block the linebacker. Shazam. <laughs> That's how that works? Oh, my goodness. A brother steps slowly there. Pull, big boy. I get the ball, I, I scored so many touchdowns when I finally ran the play the way that coach drew it up. And can I tell you, God has a spiritual playbook. And if you will run God's play the way he has them drawn up, I'm telling you, you will have the best year ever. But the problem is we try to run our own play. We try to do it our own way instead of seeking first the kingdom of God. And what I want to do is I want to give you a spiritual play to run. And I'm telling you, here's, what, here's my challenge. Would you commit to this play for one year? Just one year. Just, just give this play one year. Just do it for one year. And I'm telling you, if you will commit to this spiritual play for one year, it's going to change your life. You're going to be seeking God first. You're going to experience the blessings of God. You're going to be closer to God. You're going to come at the end of the year, and you're going to thank me that your life is better because it'll be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually. And if you run God's spiritual play.
Here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to give you a spiritual play to run. Here it goes. Here it goes. Just four things in this spiritual play. Here it goes. Number one is this. Faithfully pray and read God's word. Oh, pastor, give me something deep. This is deep because most people don't do this. Faithfully pray and read God's word. We like to say it around here. Give God the first 15 minutes. Everybody can do that every morning. I'm not saying you have 30 minutes or an hour or two. I think the more you grow in God, the more you want to spend time with God. But we can all, 15 minutes, it's easy. Pastor, I don't know if I can do that for 15 minutes. Let me tell you how. Just pray for five minutes. Just, just write a list out of the things you want to pray or get one of our prayer guides that we give out at 21 Days of Prayer and just pray for five minutes. Then read your Bible for five minutes. Just start in the book of Matthew. Start in Psalms. Start in Proverbs. And just, just read the Bible for five minutes. And then get your favorite worship song. And just play it. That's about five minutes of worship song. And just worship to your favorite worship song. Just give God the first five minute pray, worship Bible. You got to get into God's word. The more you read the Bible, the more you will love the author. You, you don't read the Bible to know the Bible. You read the Bible to know God. And a dusty Bible always leads to a messy life. So every day, pray, worship, Bible, pray, worship, Bible, pray, worship, Bible, run the play, run the play. Here, here, here's the second one on faithfully read, pray, and read God's Word. Here's the second thing I want you to do on faithfully pray and read God's Word. Attend 21 days of prayer now and in August. Just, I'm just run, just run, pastor, them 6 a.m. prayer meetings, that's of the devil. No, that's the devil talking to you right now. I, it'll change your life. I'm just saying, if you would just run, pastor, I'm not going to do that. I'm just telling you, if you'll run the play. If, you, if you'll run the play. It's not too late to jump in. If you, you haven't been praying and fasting with us or you're brand new to the church today, jump in this week and begin to run the play and begin to seek God at 6 a.m. You can come to the building. You can jump online. We have it online. It's archived for 24 hours. I'm saying pray and fast. Give up something that you love and fast it, uh, some type of food, some type of dessert. Just give it up. Social media, you tell them, give it up and begin to seek the face of God. And we'll do it again in August, 21 days of prayer and feasting in August. But I'm telling you, it will change your life if you will come and pray, 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 pray. Dirty knees will keep you from a dirty life. Pray, 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 pray. Faithfully pray and read God's word. Here's the second, here's the second thing, here's the second thing. Worship in God's house faithfully. Worship in God's house faithfully. Run the play. Psalm chapter 84 and verse 10, I love this verse. It says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God, in the church of my God, than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Oh, what a great verse. Better is one day in God's courts than a thousand elsewhere. Listen, I'd rather be in God's court more than any NBA basketball court. I'd rather be in God's court than any great food court. But although I am a little tempted by some food courts right now, this fasting going on, but can I tell you, church, nothing can compare to being in God's house with God's people. I love the house of God. I love the presence of God. Better is one day in God's courts than a thousand Elsewhere, I know as I read that scripture, some of you are thinking, I don't know about that. I can think of some other places I'd rather be. And I understand that. And here's what I would ask you to pray. If you don't have a passion to be in God's house, would you ask God? Just ask him, God, give me a passion. Put a passion in me for your house. Put a passion in me for your presence. I love what David said in Psalm chapter 69 and verse number 9. He said, passion for your house has consumed me. So pray, pray, God, give me a passion for your house. Give me a passion for your presence. Give me a passion to worship with your people. Give me a passion to hear the preaching of the word of God. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Here's a practical way to do this. Here's practical. What everybody just set a goal for 2023. How many Sundays are you going to attend this year? Just say, I'm going to seek God first by being in God's house. Maybe it's 48 Sundays. Maybe it's 45 Sundays a year. Maybe you say, Pastor, I'm probably going to end up missing once a month. Okay, it's 40 Sundays this year. I'm going to be in, I'm going to run the play, Pastor. I'm going to run the play. I'm going to run the play. Make the commitment right now. Sign up for that four-week challenge and say, I'm going to begin starting next Sunday. Run the play. Here's the third. 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 And that is this. Give your life away 
by serving others faithfully. Just run the play. Here's how you do that. First of all, complete growth track. It's a four-week class. It happens every single month or just about every single month. And it begins February the 5th. And give me four weeks of your life. Learn more about God, more about the church, more about your spiritual gifts. And then here's, here's what you do. Join the dream team. Serve on the dream team. Find a place to serve. And here's, here's what I know some people think. Pastor, you're just trying to build a church. You just got some bad motives. And I really don't. Now, I do want our church to grow. I do want to reach more people. But I really do want more, want more for you than I want from you. And I really, I really know if you'll run the play. And I know some of you are not. You're like, mm, nah, mm. no, thank you. <laughs> and we'll try it again next year with you. But I'm just telling you, if you will run the play, if you'll complete growth track, and if you'll start serving others, you'll start giving your life away and serving others, I'm telling you, your spiritual growth, and so you'll be seeking first the kingdom of God. You'll be others-minded. What God's going to do in your life is going to make such a huge difference. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of serving God's grace, your gra grace in its various form. I, I love what Gandhi said. He said the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself serving others. Run the play. Just run the play. Just run the play. Here's the fourth one. Here's the, there's four things to run the play. Here's the last one. Grow closer to God and others by attending a small group faithfully. Grow closer to God and others by attending a small group faithfully. Spiritual growth happens best in circles, not sitting in rows. Spiritual growth happens best in community, not in isolation. You will never reach your God-given potential all by yourself. In 2023, run the spiritual play and get in a small group. Now, here's what I want to do. If you want to take a picture of this, get ready. I want you to see all four of them at the same time and run the spiritual play. Check this out. For one year, I'm asking, just try for one year. One year, run the spiritual pl play. Faithfully pray and read God's word. Worship in God's house faithfully. Give your life away by serving others faithfully. Grow closer to God and others by attending a small group faithfully. And I'm telling you, if you will run the play at the end of 2023, you're going to be closer to God. You're going to be seeking God's face more. God's going to bless your life if you run the spiritual play. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto your life. Point number three is this. Point number three. Point number three. Point number three. Here's my last point. Here's what I wish I would have known years ago. I wish I would have went all in with Jesus sooner. I do. I wish I would have went all in with Jesus sooner. Going all in is how we seek first the kingdom of God. I remember growing up in church. I remember going to Sunday school as a little kid. I remember the, the Sunday school bus coming to pick me up, coming down Mekasuki Street to my street to pick me up, to take me to Sunday school. I remember skipping church. Bus picked me up. I'm skipping today. Go to the convenience store. That's bad, church. That's bad. I wasn't all in. And, and what I, I wish somebody would have really got a hold of me and said, listen, God wants to be first. He wants you all in. God doesn't want you half in. God doesn't want you three-fourths in. Uh, how many of you remember the game Hokey Pokey, the song? Anybody remember that? Huh? Some of you might be too young to remember Hokey Pokey. Maybe, come on, everybody remember Hokey Pokey? Put your right foot in. Put your right foot out. Put your right foot in. And shake it all about. Do the Hokey Pokey. And hey, turn yourself around. That's what is all. Woo! Give yourself a hand clap. Right foot in. Put your right foot off. Put your right foot in. And do the hokey pokey. And that's what is all up. We got a lot of hokey pokey Christians. I put my kids in, I put my marriage out, I put my car in, I put my job out, I put my friendship in, I put my anger out, I put Sunday morning in, I put Friday night out, put my attitude in, I put my money out. That's what is out. Now, you got hokey pokey faith. 
that's going to leave you with so many regrets. It will leave you wishing you would have went it all in with God sooner. And some of you have not gone in with God. You have not gone all in because here's you have deceived yourself with hokey pokey faith. I talk to people all the time that God's not first in your life. And you think, here's what you think. You think, well, it's okay. It's okay. Because God's got part of me. Like, 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 Pastor, I believe in God. I believe the Bible. I mean, I come to church sometimes. I, I pray sometimes. I mean, I'm not all in. But, but, but I, there's some of me in. But God does not want some of your life. God doesn't want you half in and half out. He doesn't want just to be a part of your life. God wants all of you. He wants to be first in your life. And let me tell you something about God. God won't settle for second place in your life. You will miss out on so many of his blessings. You will miss out on closeness with God and deep, intimate relationship with God because God will not settle for second place in your life. Here's what Scripture says in Luke chapter 9, verse 61. And another said, here's what another said. Yes, Lord, I will follow you. I will put you first. I'll seek you first. But first, but first, let me say goodbye to my family. Hokey pokey faith always says but first. Church, think about this. What's your but first? Instead of God first, you got a but first. First, what's your excuse? What, what's the area of your life that you refuse to put God first in? Here's what Jesus said. Here's what Jesus says, verse 62. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts, his, uh, puts a hand to the plow, then looks back halfway in, halfway out, is not fit for the kingdom of God. I love how the message translation reads this verse. It says, Luke 9, verse 62. Jesus said, no procrastination, no backward looks. You can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow seize the day no more hokey pokey faith no more one foot in and one foot out in 2023 seek first the kingdom of God go all in with God and all these other things will be added to your life as well in 2023 run the spiritual play all year long run the spiritual play and here's what I know it will be your best year ever because it will be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually it will be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually it will be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually it'll be your best year ever if it's your best year spiritually go all in seek first the kingdom of God go all in run the spiritual play heavenly father thanks for your word today thank you for speaking to us today I thank you God that you care about all of our needs. I thank you that you know what we need before we even know we need it. And I thank you to desire to meet our needs. And I thank you, God, that the spiritual and the natural are connected. And if today, God, people will seek you first, all those other things will be added. So God, I pray today, people would take that spiritual next step to seek first the kingdom of God and go all in with Jesus and run the spiritual play. Father, I thank you for touching your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As eyes are still closed, heads are bowed. Just no moving around. I'm talking to some people right now. You've got some hokey pokey faith. One foot in, one foot out. Or some of you got both feet out. But you know about Jesus. You know about the things of God. You used to live for God with all of your heart. But you've just drifted away. You've just been doing your own thing. You've been making your own plays up. You've been running your own plays, and you're away from God today, and you need to recommit your life back to Jesus Christ. Today is your day to rededicate your life to the Lord. There are others of you that you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
you know some things about God, some things about church. You might know a Bible verse. You might know amazing grace, but you don't know God. I mean, you just look at your life and you're like, man, I know I don't know God. I know I'm not living for God. I know I'm not serving God. And today is your day. God loves you so much. He sent Jesus to die on the cross. He wants to forgive you of all of your sins. Today is your day to give your life to Jesus Christ. That verse says, no procrastination, no backward looks. You can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow. Seize the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to give your life to Jesus Christ. As I count to three, if that's you, you want to give your life to the Lord or read it, dedicate your life back to Jesus. Come on, no more hokey pokey faith. Go all in with Jesus today. As I count to three, just shoot your hand up high at every location. One, two, three. Just lift it high. Say, Pastor, that's me. Thank you so much. Others, thank you so much. Other hands, thank you so much. That's it. Others today, I want to go all in. That's it. Come on, Midwest City. There's somebody that needs to go all in. Come on, Northwest. Today's your day. Today's the day of salvation. I see your hand there in the back. Others today, come on. Come on. Ladies at Mabel Bassett, just lift it high. If you're online right now, just click the raise your hand button or just right now, right now, if you, you that feature is not on the device that you're on, just right in the chat line, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Come on. You're surrendering to Jesus today. Every hand that's lifted, I want you to pray this prayer with me and to give your life to Jesus Christ. I see more hands going up. Others today. Others today. I'm going to ask every hand that's raised to pray this with me. Just pray now. Heavenly Father, no more hokey pokey faith. Today, I surrender my life fully to Jesus. Jesus Christ, thank you right now for forgiving me. I thank you right now that you're my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for grace and mercy. And Heavenly Father, I'm seeking you first for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray.